Professor Randall Woods. Thank you for coming to UNC Chapel Hill today and thanks for talking to us in our series Five Minute Insights. You are one of the nation's leading political historians and an expert on the Cold War and indeed the Vietnam War. Let me ask you a few questions, if I may. The CIA has been much in the news recently. What exactly was the role of the CIA during the Cold War? Was it a positive or a rather negative one? I think on the whole it was a positive one because um, there were one large positive and many small negatives uh, in, that, um, in that we didn't have uh, Armageddon, that we didn't have a nuclear war, that, we didn't, uh, uh, that, it, didn't, that it didn't all, all end. Uh, Bill Colby, who, was, who headed the CIA at one time, told, uh, uh, told uh, Brezhnev, he said, you know, the more we know about each other, uh, the safer the world is. I thought that was an interesting perspective. Tell us about the activities of the CIA and CIA director William Colby during the Vietnam War. We know relatively little about the role of the CIA in Vietnam, or do we? Well, the, the, the CIA was uh, there throughout the war. Uh, they were engaged in nation building, uh, trying to organize uh, local communities into uh, armed defense groups, trying to build support for the central government. Uh, that effort waxed and waned. Uh, uh, it was overshadowed after 1965 with uh, search and destroy and main force uh, uh, combat, many refugees. But uh, Colby, uh, who was back in, in, uh, the U uh, in Washington then, and group individuals in, in, in Vietnam, uh, persuaded the Johnson administration gradually to move away from, uh, from search and destroy and uh, main force combat and to emphasize uh, counterinsurgency and pacification. Uh, by 1968, there was a, a very large and I think effective uh, counterinsurgency and pacification organization in Vietnam, CARDS, many Americans that were Vietnamese speaking. Uh, I think they had pacified much of the countryside uh, by 1972, but the country really had turned against the war after Tet, and it, it didn't matter really what the CIA did. But the public did not turn against Vietnam because of the activities of the CIA? No, I think not. Not even partially? Uh, I think it was after the fact. I think that uh, the revelations uh, about Phoenix, which uh, really began to hit the, uh, uh, the front pages of the newspapers uh, in 1970, uh, I, th I think, or 71, I think it was, it was already too late. Uh, the, 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 even even if, there, if, if there hadn't been a Phoenix program, even if the CIA hadn't been there, I think that the, the country would have abandoned Vietnam. Thank you. Moving from the Cold War to the post-Cold War era, the years since 1990, how would you characterize the role of the CIA in America's many, role, uh, many wars since then? The Gulf War of the early 1990s, Afghanistan, the Iraq War? Well, as you know, the agency is, is, is uh, when, it, when it was founded, it was the agency. Now it's just one of a number of agencies, and it's it's difficult uh, for contemporary historians to distinguish uh, what activities the CIA is involved in, and one that in uh, which activities the National Security Administration or uh, military intelligence. Um, the, the the CIA has become somewhat uh, subsumed. I think future historians, uh, their task is going to be uh, to 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 uh, try to try to ferret out exactly what was a CIA activity and what wasn't a CIA activity. Yeah, thank you. And um, do you think that the activities of the CIA, assassination attempts and other dubious activities, that they have undermined the value of what we call American values, even American democracy, and America's credibility abroad? Um, I had a number of people say that I thought it was impartial that, that looked at uh, when the family, when the family jewels came out in the 1970s said that if you, actually if you looked at other uh, uh, intelligence services and secret sec state security services over a 25 uh, year period, what the CIA did was pretty pretty mild. All right. Pretty mild. <laughs> All right. So um, last but not least, do we need the CIA yes. for maintaining the yes. security of the United States? Yes. So we should not think about getting rid of it or similar organizations no, and abolish it? No, it's absolutely vital. I mean, the only alternative, it, you know, there's espionage for protecting our secrets, but there's also a counterinsurgency and nation building. The alternative to counterinsurgency and nation building is full scale war, is, 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 is conventional main force unit combat. And uh, that turned out to be the problem in Vietnam, not the solution. 
and I think that's true. That that's true uh, in hotspots around the world today. And can you actually point out to us, to us when and in which cases intelligence organizations like the CIA have actually made a difference, a positive difference, maintained the security without uh, otherwise it would have been much worse? Well, I really can. I mean, it, you, you, what, you, what you're talking, what, what, what this is, is a study, uh, a listing of things that didn't happen. Right. <laughs> If you see what I'm saying. And, and it could have happened. Mm -hmm. uh, you, actually, you, you, if, and I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a student of the contemporary CIA, but the, the intelligence um, community puts out a, 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 a magazine, uh, Studies in Intelligence, in which they actually publish internal critiques and uh, the, the agency has been its own harshest critic so if you want if you want to find out when it worked and when it didn't work um, you can for if it's Iran Contra or if it's Afghanistan or if it's uh, um, uh, any any you can you can really because they they are the hardest evaluators of, of themselves in terms of their stated objectives Is is it in our interest to, 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 to maintain a stable regime here? Is it our uh, interest to keep this information from our enemies? In terms of those goals, you can you can tell. But I, I can't imagine a modern state without uh, actually surviving and functioning without an intelligence establishment. Thank you very much, okay. Wendell Woods. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank, Thank you. you.